Welcome to the City of El Paso Department of Public Health Food Handlers course. We hope you enjoy the convenience of taking this course online. This course will help you achieve the requirement from the state of Texas for all food employees to successfully complete an accredited food handlers course. Please remember that after you take the course, you must visit our office at 5115 El Paso Drive to pay the fee, take the exam, and receive your food handler's card. It is required that your food handler card remain at your place of employment at all times. We will provide you with detailed instructions on completing this process at the end of the course. Besides, of course, earning a living, the goal of any food handler should be to prevent the public from contracting a foodborne illness. Let's take a look at the definition of a foodborne illness. A foodborne illness comprises the various acute syndromes that result from the ingestion of contaminated food. Foodborne illnesses are classified as intoxications, toxin-mediated infections, and infections. We must control the spread of foodborne illness to decrease the occurrence of foodborne outbreaks. A foodborne illness outbreak occurs when two or more cases of similar illness result from the ingestion of a common food. Botulism is one of the deadliest foodborne illnesses. It can cause paralysis and even death. Symptoms of botulism include slurred speech, blurred vision, and drooping eyelids. This is why when symptoms are first presented, it is often mistaken for drunkenness. Here is an interesting fact. The largest botulism outbreak in the United States since 1978 occurred in El Paso in 1994. 30 people were infected with botulism after eating at a popular restaurant. In this case, the food that was associated with the outbreak was baked potato that was used as an ingredient in a dip. As a food handler in El Paso, we know you want to help prevent the occurrence of foodborne illnesses. Throughout the presentation, we will discuss ways that you can play a role in helping to prevent foodborne illness and keep the public safe. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention identifies five common risk factors that are responsible for foodborne illness, which are unapproved sources, inadequate cooking, improper holding, contaminated equipment, and personal hygiene. The first risk factor that we will discuss is providing food from an unapproved source. Food that comes from an unapproved source include foods that are made in a private home or any food vendors, manufacturers, or wholesalers that are not licensed or permitted. Food that comes from an unapproved source has not been inspected by a government agency to ensure food safety. The picture on the left is a food product from an unlicensed vendor that was selling at a local flea market. The picture on the right shows an establishment that was illegally processing goat. It was obviously not being handled in a very sanitary manner. As you can see from this picture, this is not the quality of meat you would receive from a USDA approved processor. Another risk factor is inadequate cooking. El Paso City Ordinance and Texas law recommends that ground meat, fish, beef, pork, poultry, etc. be consumed fully cooked due to potential health risks associated with consumption of these products when not fully cooked. According to law, when offering undercooked meats, seafood, or eggs, you must provide an advisory to inform consumers of the increased risk of foodborne illness. An establishment that serves a highly susceptible population, citizens that are at an increased risk for foodborne illness, such as elderly care or child care facilities, and hospitals may not serve undercooked foods. Here is an example of inadequate cooking. According to the CDC, holding temperatures of TCS foods are the third most common risk factor for foodborne illness. Time temperature control for safety foods, or more commonly known as TCS foods, are foods that require proper holding temperatures to minimize the growth of pathogens such as bacteria. Cut leafy greens are now considered TCS foods.
TCS foods must be maintained at a temperature of 41 degrees Fahrenheit or below when kept in cold holding. TCS foods must be maintained at a temperature of 135 degrees Fahrenheit or above when kept in hot holding. The next risk factor is contaminated equipment. Pathogens linger on food equipment in crevices and gaps that are not visible and or easily accessible for cleaning. Remember that all food contact surfaces must be cleaned to sight and touch. We will discuss proper cleaning and sanitizing later in the presentation. This example of contaminated equipment shows an ice machine with mold and mildew. The last risk factor we will discuss is personal hygiene. Since the food handler is the primary cause of food contamination, practicing good personal hygiene is important. This includes hand washing, daily bathing, wearing clean outer clothing, using an effective hair restraint, fingernail maintenance, and limiting jewelry on the hands and wrists. Proper and frequent hand washing is the most important way to prevent a foodborne illness. It is important that employees follow the proper procedure for an effective hand wash. Employees' hands and the exposed portions of their arms must be kept clean by rinsing under clean, running, warm water, applying an amount of cleaning compound, rubbing vigorously for at least 10 to 15 seconds, cleaning under fingernails and between fingers, creating friction on all surfaces, including prosthetic devices, and thorough rinsing under clean, running, warm water. Immediately following the cleaning procedure with a thorough drying using an approved method. This is an example of bad hand washing techniques. This is an example of proper hand washing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. When should hand washing be done? Hand washing should be done before starting work, before putting on single service gloves, after touching raw, fresh, or frozen beef or other meat, after mopping, sweeping, removing garbage, or using the telephone, after using the bathroom, after smoking, eating, or drinking, after touching anything that might result in contamination of hands, such as money handling. Hand washing must be done in a hand wash lavatory designed for this purpose only. A hand washing lavatory shall be equipped to provide water at a minimum temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit and supplied with soap and towels. Disposable towels must be provided and used to turn off manual faucets and to open doors. If used, a hand antiseptic must comply with all FDA regulations. Remember, a hand antiseptic does not replace a proper hand wash. 
If used, single-use gloves shall be used for only one task, such as working with ready-to-eat food or with raw animal food, used for no other purpose, and discarded when damaged or soiled or when interruptions occur in the operation. Fingernails must be kept trimmed, filed, and maintained so that the edges and surfaces are cleanable and not rough. Continuing with our topic of personal hygiene, remember that outer clothing must be kept clean. When you come into work, you should be wearing clean clothing. And while at work, it is important to change out of aprons if they become heavily soiled. This will help to prevent contamination of food, equipment, utensils, linens, and single-use and single-service articles. Jewelry is prohibited while preparing food. Except for a plain ring, such as a wedding band, a food handler may not wear jewelry, including medical information, jewelry on their hands, wrists, or arms. Good personal hygiene includes not eating, drinking, smoking, vaping, or using tobacco in areas where contamination of exposed food, clean equipment, utensils, linens, and unwrapped single-service articles is possible. Smoking is not allowed when working in a food establishment. That's because when you smoke, you transmit saliva from your mouth and then to your fingers, which will transfer to the food. Finally, always remember to wear your hair restraints. Food employees must wear effective hair restraints to include hats, hair coverings, beard restraints, and clothing that covers excess body hair. Live animals may not be allowed on the premises of a food establishment except for edible fish or decorative fish in aquariums, shellfish or crustacean on ice or under refrigeration, and shellfish and crustacean in display tank systems. Patrol dogs accompanying police or security officers service dogs in areas that are not used for food preparation. Next, we'll talk about your responsibility of reporting disease or medical conditions to your employer. If you have any vomiting, jaundice, sore throat with a fever, diarrhea, or a lesion containing pus on the hands, wrists, or on exposed portions of your arms, you are required to report these symptoms to your person in charge. In case you are wondering, jaundice is a yellowing of the skin and the whites of the eyes, which is a symptom of hepatitis A. There are six major foodborne illnesses that are easily transferable through food. They're referred to as the big six. As mentioned earlier, your goal is to prevent the public from contracting a foodborne illness. With that said, if you are diagnosed with any of the following, norovirus, shigella, hepatitis A, shigatoxin producing E. coli, salmonella typhi, or non-typhoidal salmonella, you are required by law to report it to your employer. It is your responsibility to report diagnosis of a big six illness to your person in charge. The person in charge is responsible for excluding you, which means you may not work or restrict you to duties that do not involve exposed food, clean equipment, linens, or any unwrapped single service or single use articles. There are many factors that will determine if you are excluded or restricted. Many foodborne illnesses are passed from person to food through unsaved food handling practices by an infected food handler. A ready-to-eat RTE food is a food in a form that is edible without additional preparation to achieve food safety. An example would be tostadas. These are examples of ready-to-eat food from the Texas Food Establishment Rules. Raw animal food that is cooked raw fruits and vegetables, fruits and vegetables that are cooked, all time temperature controlled food that is cooked, a bakery item such as bread, dry fermented sausages such as dry salami or pepperoni, salt cured meat and poultry products including jerky or beef sticks. So now that you know what RTE foods are, it is important that you know that except when washing fruits and vegetables, a food employee may not contact exposed RTE food with their bare hands. 
Instead of using your bare hands, you must use an acceptable utensil. Some examples of an acceptable utensil would include deli tissue, tongs, single-use gloves, or dispensing equipment. Please look at the charts that note some of the risks associated with contacting ready-to-eat foods with your bare hands. If you look into the prevention column, it relates back to our previous topic of personal hygiene, specifically hand washing. This is why minimizing bare hand contact with RTE food is important. We had previously discussed establishments that have highly susceptible population. These establishments serve people who may have weakened immune systems such as preschool age children, the elderly, and pregnant women. They can more easily contract a foodborne illness than someone who is not part of this population. There are certain foods that may not be served to a highly susceptible population, which include unpasteurized juice, undercooked or rare meat, and raw shell eggs. Another way to prevent the spread of foodborne illness is through controlling time and temperature of TCS foods. Remember from earlier, a TCS food is a food that requires time temperature control for safety to limit pathogenic microorganism growth or toxic formation. Some examples of TCS foods would be chicken breast, salsa, baked potatoes, raw seed sprouts, cut melons, cut leafy greens, or cut tomatoes. The three types of contamination that can occur are physical, chemical, and biological. An example of physical contamination is hair or glass. If a chemical such as bleach comes into contact with food, a chemical contamination has occurred. A bacteria or virus will cause a biological contamination. If an artificial fingernail or band-aid falls into food, what type of contamination would this be? It would be all three types of contamination. Bacteria are one of the main causes of foodborne illness. What do bacteria need to grow? An easy way to remember is the acronym FAT-TOM. That stands for food, a low pH or acid level, time, temperature, oxygen, no oxygen or both, and moisture. Food handlers have more control over time and temperature. Controlling time and temperature is important to prevent a foodborne illness outbreak. Next, we will discuss proper temperature for TCS foods. The chart shows you how to control the temperature of TCS foods to limit the growth of bacteria. Your goal will be to keep foods out of the temperature danger zone, which is between 41 degrees and 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Hot foods should be held at 135 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, and cold foods must be at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or below. Frozen foods should be kept at zero degrees Fahrenheit or less. When you remove something from cold hold to reheat it, it must be heated to 165 degrees Fahrenheit within two hours. A thermometer is required to ensure you are properly controlling the temperature of TCS foods. Take a moment to review the next two paragraphs regarding proper thermometer usage. When food is irregularly shaped, the temperature should be checked in several places. And when taking the temperature of thin foods, remove it from the heat source and insert the thermometer sideways into the food. A thermometer must be accurate. If you place your thermometer into a cup of ice water, it should read 32 degrees Fahrenheit. However, if it does not, it must be calibrated. Please follow the manufacturer's instructions for calibrating or review the following instructions. Proper receiving specifications are another important factor in food protection. The proper receiving temperatures are 41 degrees Fahrenheit or below for cold foods and 135 degrees Fahrenheit or higher for hot foods. An establishment must monitor receiving temperatures when receiving shipments of TCS foods. It is important to keep temperature logs for your records. 
when receiving time temperature control for safety foods, they must be free of evidence of previous temperature abuse. For example, ice crystals on ice cream milk products shall be obtained pasteurized. Liquid, frozen, and dry eggs and egg products shall be pasteurized, especially for the highly susceptible population. Finally, when receiving product, always make sure food packages are in good condition so they protect the integrity of the contents so that the food is not exposed to adulteration or potential contaminants. Date marking of TCS food also ensures food is protected. Any TCS food prepared and held for more than 24 hours must be dated with the date by which the food is to be consumed. This date may not be more than seven days from the date of preparation. The prep date would be considered as day one. So if you prepare beans on 610, the date that is marked when you put it into cold hold would be 616. Cut leafy greens are now considered TCS foods. Food must be protected at all times, including during storage. Using the rule of FIFO, first in and first out, ensures that newly arrived foods are placed behind foods that are already on the shelves. Other food storage tips include making sure food is covered, labeled, stored six inches above the floor, and that raw meats are stored below cooked or prepared foods. When thawing frozen food, it is important to keep it out of the temperature danger zone. TCS foods may never be thawed at room temperature. You may use one of the following methods. Move foods from freezer to refrigerator submerging under cold running water with the drain open in the microwave but it should be cooked immediately or direct cooking while prepping food it is important to remember to practice good personal hygiene and ensure correct food temperatures different foods require different cooking temperatures it is your job to familiarize yourself with the proper cooking temperatures to help stop the spread of any foodborne illness if a piece of chicken is contaminated with salmonella and it is not cooked to 165 degrees Fahrenheit, the bacteria may remain and infect the public. Microwave cooking is one option for cooking raw animal foods. If you choose this method, you must follow these steps to ensure food safety. Raw animal foods cooked in a microwave oven shall be rotated or stirred throughout or midway during cooking to compensate for uneven distribution of heat, covered to retain surface moisture, heated to a temperature of at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit in all parts of the food, and allowed to stand covered for two minutes after cooking to obtain temperature equilibrium. At times, you may prepare TCS foods in bulk and have some left over from that day's service. It is acceptable to keep leftover food product in cold holding for no longer than seven days. TCS foods must be properly cooled before storing using the following process. Time temperature control for safety or TCS foods shall be cooled from 135 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit within two hours and 70 to 41 degrees Fahrenheit within four hours. If prepared from ingredients at ambient temperature, such as reconstituted foods and canned tuna, TCS foods shall be cooled within four hours to 41 degrees Fahrenheit. The cooling process shall not exceed a total of six hours from start to finish. TCS foods may never be cooled at room temperature. We'll now go over some of the approved cooling methods. You may use any one of these methods for cooling TCS foods. An ice bath, which is placing the container of food into another container of ice and water and frequently stirring. Portioning by separating into smaller containers for liquids and semi-solid foods or using shallow pans and refrigerating for solid or mass foods. 
As we mentioned earlier, when it is necessary to reheat TCS foods that have been prepared on site and kept in cold holding, you must reheat to an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit within two hours. However, RTE TCS foods that have been commercially processed and packaged by a food processing plant that is inspected by the regulatory authority that has jurisdiction over the plant may be reheated to 135 degrees Fahrenheit. The reheating process should be done on a stove, in an oven, in a microwave, or on a grill. Heat lamps and steam tables are for hot holding and may not be used for reheating. How does cross-contamination occur? It usually occurs when cooked foods or prepared foods have contact with raw meat. Cross-contamination also happens when unclean equipment is used by food handlers or when raw beef, pork, seafood, or chicken is stored without separation. A food handler is responsible for preventing cross-contamination in a food establishment. Let's go over ways of preventing cross-contamination. In preventing cross-contamination, it is important that food handlers use a utensil only once when tasting food, wash their hands properly, and avoid bare hand contact with RTE foods. You must also try to prevent contamination by the consumer. An establishment with buffet-style self-service must provide an advisory notifying consumers that clean tableware must be used when returning to a self-service area. Thank you. I hope you like this restaurant. I heard it's pretty good. Thank you. Yes, I heard that too. Ma'am, can I have this please? Of course. Here you go. Thank you. Be right back with your fingers. Thank you. Did you see the way she hands me the spoon? Yeah, it was pretty cool. She put her fingers in my drink. What a hair on the drink. Yeah, it is. That's disgusting. That is pretty gross. Cool. Let's get out of here. It's cool. Obviously, the server in the video has some things to learn about proper serving methods. Take a moment and review the tips provided for proper serving to your customers. These practices can help reduce contamination. It is important to properly handle single service and single use articles. Single service and single use articles shall be kept in the original protective package or stored by using other means that afford protection from contamination until used. They must be handled, displayed, and dispensed so that contamination of food and lip contact surfaces is prevented. Single service and single use articles must be furnished for consumer self-service with the original individual wrapper intact or from an approved dispenser intended for food. They may not be reused. When working with food, the improper storage of poisonous and toxic materials could result in a life-threatening situation. Just imagine what could happen if a bottle of bleach fell into a container of salad dressing. This is a situation that could have easily been avoided by storing the bleach away from the salad dressing container. Toxic materials shall not be stored next to food inside a refrigeration unit in an area that is above food, equipment, utensils, linens, and single service articles. A restricted use pesticide shall be applied only by a certified applicator. You may not think the word toxic when you think of medication, but if stored improperly, it can become a source of contamination. Sometimes it is necessary for employees of a food establishment or parents of children at a daycare to bring medications with them. Therefore, it is important that medicines be stored away from food and in a spill-proof container if stored in refrigeration. Food allergies are becoming more common in today's society. It is important that your consumers are aware if any of the eight major food allergens are in any of the items that you serve. You must familiarize yourself with the following allergens. Dairy, eggs, wheat, soy, peanuts, tree nuts, fish, and shellfish. We've discussed hygiene, temperature control, 
unapproved sources, and now we'll talk about ways to prevent contamination from unclean equipment. Here are some key terms that are used when talking about cleaning procedures. Clean, sanitize, sterilize. Do we sanitize or do we sterilize? The food industry sanitizes. Doctors, hospitals, laboratories, and dentists sterilize. We told you earlier that equipment and food contact surfaces must be clean. By sanitizing, you're ensuring that food surfaces are safe to use. When it comes to food and food contact surfaces, you would be in compliance with the law if you follow these rules. Ensure equipment, food contact surfaces, and utensils are clean to sight and touch. Also, the food contact surfaces of cooking equipment and pans are kept free of encrusted grease deposits and other soil accumulations. Finally, non-food contact surfaces of equipment will be kept free of an accumulation of dust, dirt, food residue, and other debris. There is some equipment that must be cleaned in place. Follow the recommended manufacturer instructions when cleaning in place. So when should you clean and sanitize food contact surfaces? Equipment, food contact surfaces, and utensils shall be cleaned before each use with different raw animal products. Between changes from working with raw animal product to ready-to-eat food, between uses with raw fruits and vegetables, and with TCS foods, before using or storing a food temperature measuring device at any time during the operation when contamination may have occurred. Not all food establishments sanitize using the same method. It is important to read the manufacturer's instructions when using a chemical sanitizer. Here are some examples of ways to sanitize equipment. Using chemical sanitizers such as chlorine, iodine, quaternary ammonium, or hot water at least 171 degrees Fahrenheit. How can you tell if you're sanitizing properly? If using chemical sanitizer, you must use chemical test strips to ensure the chemical is at the proper concentration. Since there are many types of chemical sanitizers, your employer must provide you with the correct type of test strips. Temperature gauges and thermometers are used to check proper temperature for hot water sanitizing. As stated earlier, you must follow manufacturer's instructions when using chemical sanitizer. If a wear washing sink is used to wash wiping cloths, wash produce, or thaw foods, the sink shall be cleaned before and after each time it is used to wash wiping cloths or wash produce or thaw food. Sinks used to wash or thaw food shall be sanitized before and after using the sink. When washing dishes, follow these steps. Wash hands, wash the three compartment sink, and drain boards. Prepare the sanitizing solution. Wash in clean, hot, soapy water. Rinse in clean water. Sanitize in cold water, 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and air dry. Another way to clean and sanitize dishes is by using a mechanical dishwashing machine. By using the steps provided, you will ensure your dishes are washed properly. Wash hands. Clean machine once daily or after each shift as necessary. Pre-flush, scrape and soak dishes. Wash, rinse, sanitize with hot water at 180 degrees Fahrenheit at manifold or 160 degrees at tray level or 50 to 100 parts per million of chlorine or according to manufacturer specifications and air dry. Wear washing machines or other receptacles used for washing and rinsing equipment, utensils or raw foods, or laundering wiping cloths and drain boards or other equipment used to substitute for drain boards shall be cleaned before each use, throughout the day at a frequency necessary to prevent recontamination of equipment and utensils and to ensure that the equipment performs its intended function if used at least every 24 hours. We will now discuss how to control and eliminate rodents, insects, and other pests. The following methods must be used to control and eliminate pests. Keep the establishment clean. Do not allow entry or provide harborage. Make doors and windows tight-fitting, no light seen. 
No dirty dishes overnight. No standing water. Keep trash cans covered. Keep outside area clean. Cleanliness is the best method to prevent a rodent or insect infestation. Some insect control devices may be used if installed according to law and are used in a way that will prevent contamination. We've discussed cleanliness as a way to control and eliminate pests. Here are a few more helpful tips. Insects, rodents, and other pests shall be controlled by eliminating harborage conditions, routinely inspecting incoming shipments of food and supplies, routinely inspecting premises for evidence of pests, and cleanliness. These pictures illustrate why it is important to routinely inspect the premises for evidence of pests. The City of El Paso Department of Public Health congratulates you for completing this food handler course. We hope that you retain and use the information provided to you in your place of employment and in your everyday life. You must now go to our office at 5115 El Paso Drive, 79905, Monday through Thursday between 7 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. to pay your fee, take your exam, and receive your food handler's card. Once you have received your food handler's card, you must keep it in your place of employment so it is available for verification by food inspection staff upon request. The state of Texas requires that you complete an accredited food handler's course and maintain the proof on site at all times. Therefore, it is essential that you finish this process in a timely manner. Good luck on your exam.